Hello, the co-creative destiny viewers. Yeah, is Erica, also known as Erica Amazing Me, <laughs> like the name of my website. Um, some of you may know me. I'm an author of the book, The Weirding Way, The Mysterious Art of Living Your Own Destiny, where I write about different cycles that um, leave our weird, which snows for our destiny. And the mysterious art is to go with the flow with your destiny and co-creatively shape it. Yeah, and I also recently published my second book, The Even More Weirding Way, <laughs> um, The Art Chemy of Turning Demons into Diamonds is based on my healing journey with breast cancer. And since I like to tell um, weirding wisdom, weirding is all about weaving, how we are woven in the big tapestry of life, like Norse mythology, we are woven through the Nornir, the three Norns, who are said to have woven the whole universe. And there is a Norn of the past, present and future. And that's why I like um, to call myself like a destiny weaver, because the more conscious we become um, about our unique threat, or different threads um, we have been woven into the big tapestry, the more conscious can we co-create with our own destiny and with source. And some of you who uh, uh, received my weekly newsletter know that I always draw a rune for the week. Um, and today I felt like doing it differently uh, because I feel there are so many threads weaving through me. And I recently discovered I'm a rainbow type um, by a great quiz from Asia Zula. I also just started an intuitive plant medicine course with her. And I really feel like this rainbow because I've got so many colors, so many gifts, so many interests. And I think it's more alive if I share uh, with you this weekly rune. And um, a weekly Berigini, the goddess symbol in Slavic and a shamanic oracle card. So the rune for the week, this is a uh, Raido and it stands for a journey, being in movement, also for shamanic drumming or for cooperation, like uh, to bring something into action It could be like physical, but also it's like spiritual, like you might want to go on a shamanic uh, journey to receive wisdom. Um, what I gather at the moment is like shamanic oracle card is stand still. And first of all, I would think like, oh, this is a contradiction between movement and stand still. So, I feel that it means to go more on an inward journey. Maybe um, you also like shamanic journeying, like I do, for example, um, or maybe reading the Akashic records. Yeah, maybe going on a um, walk in uh, silence, contact your spirit animals or other allies, and, and receive messages like that. So it's more the contemplative um, movement with Raido for the week. That's what I'm gathering. And then goes well with the Perigini symbol. Um, some of you who don't know it, this is a Slav very old Slavic feminine wisdom it is said that at birth, we've got seven energies uh, that weave through us and that support us throughout, throughout our whole life. And I've actually just currently learned how to do this very detailed um, soul tree horoscope readings. And it's like a tree because then I can um, count on a very old sun and moon calendar. Um, what are your your three main energies in the roots and then your main berigini 
Like for me, it's for example, in my shamanic death, it's the raven. It stands for the wise one connected um, from below and above to all the ancestors with them and all the other um, seven energies because they are like a soul tree. I've uh, embroidered them like in my shamanic dress, which is also like a tree. So if you're interested in that, get in touch with me. I'm a very freshly, uh, like almost qualified soul tree horoscope reader. And as far as I know, the only one who can also do it in English. And the same goes for the birth runes readings. Uh, based on the idea that we are woven through certain threads, uh, the birth runes into the big tapestry. And there are six main uh, birth runes, like four hero makers and, and two for the south node and um, the north node. So making it six all together. This is like the core birth runes, but you can also uh, do a more uh, detailed um, soul singers horoscope as well. Uh, so get in touch with me. I can uh, tell you more about that. I've been uh, learning this for many years from my teacher, Imagine Rose, and now I'm about to um, step out and giving these readings as well. So the beginning is the, um, for the week. This is the wisdom keeper from the uh, first cycle. There are nine cycles and they're all divided in three worlds, like the Naf world. This is our like ancestors world, the Yav, which is like the, uh, the, the middle world where we are living. And the Prav is the divine world. And this one, it's all black. It's from the Naf, from the ancestors world. And the wisdom keeper, um, yeah, it carries secret wisdom. And the spirit guinea can look behind the masks of people, yeah, and uncover all secrets. So it's a very deep wisdom and reminds me like of the three knowns who also sit in the life tree and who are said to have woven the whole universe. It's really represented very, very well, the wisdom keeper. And I think all together, like the standstill, the wisdom keeper, and Aido, I think it invites us to go inwards, to connect to our own inner wisdom, standing still, and then go on an inner journey to receive wisdom. Yeah, and then see what happens this week. And I also like to read a little passage from my recently published book, The Even More Weird In Way, The Art Comedy of Turning Demons Into Diamonds, My Healing Journey with Breast Cancer. So you can get it on Amazon. And I also developed an online course with a few shamanic journeys to, yeah, as a, as a guidance, what helps me on my healing journey, going to the underworld, also with my Ellie, the raven, like I've just shown to you as my name, Regini, my, on my shamanic dress, going to the underworld and then meeting my demons and then going back into the embrace of an illuminated heart of love also working with some um, Siberian spirits, like the god of the underworld, Erlik, and the mother earth goddess, Omai. So I will provide you more information about this uh, below in the comments. So the even more weirding way begins. On Tuesday, the 22nd December, I went to the hospital to discuss my biopsy result that was made a week ago. I felt on top of the world since I was doing a 27 days challenge of meeting a different Ferrigini goddess symbol each day. 
this is one of them of the 27. Uh, if you're interested to also embroider such a pouch with me, with all 27 Birginis, please get in touch with me. <laughs> I felt so aligned with my soul path that it didn't cross my mind for a minute that I could receive any bad news. All the time I thought it will be a good lump that will go away from alone, or in the worst case can be removed through an operation. While waiting, I was writing with my aunt in Kazakhstan, all joyfully sharing pictures of my newly born nephew, Adrian, when I was called in to see the doctor. Afterwards, everything went so quickly. I want to go around, Miss Maisie, and come straight to the point. You have breast cancer in far developed stage and it has started to spread, in, spread into the lymphs. As soon as I heard lymphs, I started to cry because I instantly saw my mother on her deathbed. She died from lymph cancer 15 years ago. I cared for her the last year before she died. She suffered so much and I was the only one at her deathbed. I remember the doctor giving me a file, saying we need to prepare for chemotherapy as soon as possible. I shall come in on the 4th of January to start the healing journey. This is only in a one week's time. I was only crying and like in a trance, grabbing my umbrella and running out of the hospital. Outside only rain, just like my tears. The mystifying chat and meeting my demons. On Sunday, the 27th of December, I spoke with a friend with whom I have been visiting Siberia and places around the sacred mountain of Feluca during the summer of 2018. Only a few months after our trip, she was diagnosed with lymph cancer in last stadium and doctors said she wouldn't survive the year. Now, two years later, and after only a few chemo treatments, she is free of any metastasis. The doctors call it miraculous healing. When I talked with her, she told me that she practiced Buddhist, a practice chert, which translates into feeding your demons. I started. I started to watch videos on YouTube about it and also listen to the audiobook Demystifying Chat by Pal Kadmon. In summary, it is about meeting our demons and being devoured by them to really feel what the demon wants to communicate to us and then start feeding the demon that it really needs. It's shadow work. In my first book, The Wielding Way, I also talk about the integral praxis three to one, which is also very, very similar. I started to do this practice by first asking my tumor in my right breast why it is there and what it wants from me. It has shown itself in form of the obscurus that appears in the movie Fabulous Beasts and Harry Potter. It is this fast spreading weird thing, suppressed feminine magical and mystical power that shows itself in a destructive and aggressive form. The weird dark matter, which is all powerful, and if not embraced with love, it runs havoc and destroys whatever comes in contact with it. Similarly, my breast cancer tumor was already, uh, has already started to spread in the nymphs and seems unstoppable. So I welcomed Obscurus and really became it this uncontrollable but most powerful energy. It felt like it just wants to be noticed and embraced with love and affection and clear focus. Then I invited the metastasis and asked them why they appeared in my body and what they want from me. They introduced themselves as the destructive masculine that has not been fed and nourished over generations. The fairy tale about the woman with stony breasts has come to my mind. 
you can find it in my playlist um, on the wise stories by Dingwei Wisdom, where I was telling the story. In this story, the mother has no love for her son or husband. Thus, they turn destructive or not able to receive or give love. And this vicious circle is being passed on over, passed on over generation. Not possible to know when it started. Last year, I did a primordial power three days retreat around the God, Goddess, and the Divine Child, and how to bring them back to original point of matrix creation. I happened to bring the God and all masculine traumas, triggers, shadows into the surface for one whole day. I remember breaking down and wanting to die because of exhaustion and inability to share emotions as a man who has to be always strong in our patriarchal good world for many hundreds of years now. I also felt that my full sexual power can't be fully lived out because the woman is always somewhere else but not there to live out and experience sexuality fully. Thus the man turned his suppressed sexual power against women through rape and also colonization of other countries. Furthermore, robbing women of their powers and burning them on the stake or suppressing the expression in the world of employment. I experienced so much hurt and destructive powers that have been inherited to the masculine line over multiple generations. My metastasis were quite clear that this destructive masculine energy is now running havoc in my right breast and the limbs trying to destroy everything that has not been nourished and lost in this world. Speaking of demons, my sister is possessed by a demon for the past 15 years and shortly before our mother died 14 years ago. She always describes this demon as a massive Russian man, the, the Rus, who is all around our house and feeds himself from our female organs and healing powers. She says that this is the reason why our mother started having ovaries cancer, followed by cervix cancer, and then died from lymph cancer. My father's second partner also died from ovaries cancer. When my sister heard about my breast cancer diagnosis, she totally turned crazy and angry, shouting many hours, repeating again and again that this Russian giant is continuing to devour our feminine lineage line. When I did the chat practice and asked the metastasis and they presented themselves as destructive, suppressed masculine powers, I recognized this giant Russian demon as Peter the Great. Recently, it's actually Paul the Great. Recently, I watched a series, Catherine the Great with Helen Mirren, where I learned that she hated her son, Paul the Great, Peter the Great was her husband, and that he turned his hatred against her and got her killed and even set up the law that a woman can never become an empress in Russia ever again. So this is this very hateful, destructive masculine energy that is showing up in my right breast in form of the metastasis and as the giant Russian demon for my sister. And the tumor shows itself as the obscurest demon of dark cloud energy, spreading very fast, devouring my healthy cells and feminine nourishing loving energy. After discovering that my tumor is the obscurest, suppressed magical weirding power and the metastasis are destructive aggressive masculine energy, the next step of church is asking, feeding the demons that what they really need. So my demons, they obscure us. And my, my metastasis, the man at war, like in the book by Ernest Hemingway. So this, this is how my healing journey started actually, by not fight, trying to fight cancer, not to get in despair, or, or totally in the hands of the doctors. This is where my journey inside started to get to know 
the root cause of my demons. Um, I will continue reading about how they're bit by bit turned to diamonds. So you can also purchase the book if you want to read about it. Or then my online course where you, you can go on your own experience of turning your demons into diamonds. This is very much aligned with Raido for the week, going on inner journeys. Um, if you want to do some creative projects like embroidering your perigini, get in touch with me. <laughs> and also, if you're interested in the Soul Tree Horoscope reading to find out your main seven perigini goddesses or your birth rooms, also get in touch with me. I wish you a good week. Plagadariu, many, many blessings.